What's up everybody? Zach is back with another episode of Journey to a Million Dollars and I wanted to make a bull case for my 3x ETFs, the 3x leveraged. Uh, if you guys have, are following along my journey, you know I love the 3x leveraged ETFs and they have played a significant part of um, my journey so far. So I wanted to go over and I get asked about them all the time. People are wondering should they invest? They read some negative things about them online, a lot of naysayers and haters out there. Uh, but I wanted to go over and share my thoughts on it and why I'm making a bull case and I love them. But first, before we do that, smash the like button, subscribe, turn on the notifications. No, I'm just kidding. I'm not kidding. Do it. But also, <laughs> before we do that, I want to go over this week's trade so far. Uh, my Bitcoin swing is up 9%. It's all right. I mean, it dipped a lot, but it's up about 9% so far. It's doing all right. Uh, Givo is down a little bit. It's at 6.5 for this week. Uh, my ArcG is still 3%. Uh, has a has a ways to go, but it's all right. Didn't do anything new for those for the past couple of days. And uh, the only option I got into is my DocuSign option, which is down a little bit. I think it's down about 20%, but I'm still holding holding that, and I will continue to do so into tomorrow. Uh, and then these are unchanged, except uh, yeah, totally unchanged. Uh, just my docu. I'm going to hold it. I mean, this week is earnings. It's crazy week. Um, <clears throat> nothing super exciting. I mean, SPY is completely flat. Dow is down a little. Uh, NASDAQ down a little bit. Fangs are up. Uh, Facebook, Apple had good earnings. Google had good earnings. I mean, the, the Fed speech, we all always had that. Um, so, of course, they were, uh, everything was pretty much down, except for those uh, big tech ones actually were doing pretty good, but mostly everything was down up until the Fed, and, uh, and then after that was finished, the Powell speech through through until the uh, after hours it started climbing back up, and so far futures are looking decent. Uh, I think we'll finish the week out on a positive note. Um, every all I think all most of the big earnings are already out. I mean, Neo is today, so that's going to come out. If you're still holding that Neo call, good luck to you. I already took the profits on it. I don't really like to hold through earnings, but anyways, I think we covered a lot of that in yesterday's video uh, if you guys uh, caught that. But anyways, I think it'll be a pretty good into the week. So, uh, so far I'm flat though, just in case you guys are wondering, I'm very flat for the week, but I, th I take that as a big win. Um, Make sure I'm sharing this. Yep. I take it as a big win because it's been a choppy week, a very choppy week. A lot of earnings, uh, Fed speech. It is known to to shake the market. So overall, I think we're doing all right. Um, but anyways, let's move on to the 3Xs. I want to make this bull case for the 3Xs because, again, I really love them. And a lot of haters, if you look, if you just search on Google or whatever, and you'll find a lot of people saying that they are not good for long-term investment. There is too much drag. Um, the fees are so high. It's only good for like really short-term swinging or just short-term overall, whatever. Uh, not good for long-term and buying hold. And I understand why um, whoever these people are writing these articles, I understand why they say that because they talk about this drag, but there's drag. We don't want to be in this because there's drag. Um, and yes, there is a little bit of drag, but usually... Nothing to be um, scared away by. And this is not just because there's some drag, which obviously that's normal. Nothing to be scared away by. Now, let me share this screen, first of all. And then second of all, make sure I'm sharing the screen. Yes, I am. Okay. So, <coughs> I wanted to go over the math now and explain what exactly is drag. Now, I'm not a mathematician, uh, but I'm okay at math. And <laughs> this is just very basic. So, if... Let me pull up a calculator too, that might be helpful. So if there is, let's just say there's a 1x and a 3x ETF, uh, they, are, they are correlated to each other. And let's say they're just both at $100 just by chance, just to make the math easy. So if the first one <coughs> fell to $90, that's down 10%, the 1x one is down 10% to $90, okay? It actually needs to come up to recover back to $100, it needs to come up by... 11.11 percent .11%, okay now that's the 1x ETF now if the 3x ETF if the 1x counterpart fell by 10 percent so that means the 3x one should in theory fall have fallen by 30 percent so let's take a look so the first one went from
from 100 to 90. The second one should have gone by, down by 30%. The 3x version should be from 100 to 70. So that is down negative 30%. Now, for this second one to come up to recover fully to $100, it needs to go up by $30, which is actually 42, more than 42% to fully recover. So remember, the 1x version needs to recover only by 11%. The 3x version needs to recover by 42%. However, they are correlated by 3x. So if the first one is up, goes up by 11% to fully recover, the 3x version is times 3. It should only gone up by 33%, not 42%. That is what the drag is. So if it's down at $70 and it only goes up by 1.33%, uh, so it will only have gotten back to $93 and not have been fully recovered by the time the 1x version was fully recovered. Thus, you have the $7 drag. That is what is drag. Does that make sense? <laughs> Hopefully that makes sense. I don't know if I explained that right, but that is what the drag is. Essentially, is if... Um, It essentially, I don't know if that makes sense, but hopefully that makes sense. Uh, it's pretty pretty simple math, but essentially what it is is if there is a 1x that falls down by x amount, the 3x one would have gone down by 3x, obviously. But to, to go up, to recover back to that price in dips, in corrections, in pullbacks, actually the 3x one needs to increase more. But the funny thing about that is, is if you back test, back test these ETFs, back test the 3X ones, back test the 1X ones, and you will get different results than uh, in theory. Practice in practice is actually different, I have found. And this is why I think a lot of the naysayers are writing about this drag. Don't do it, it's a drag, they're dragging. Uh, long term is not good because it's a choppy market, pullbacks are not... I understand that in theory, yes, but I've been invested in these for longer than just a minute, uh, longer than short term, and I can say that, um, yes, there is not much drag, and so I have, uh, through the help of one of my followers, they have made these charts for me, and I appreciate it because it saved me a lot of time, and this is an, a topic which is frankly very interesting for me because I've made a lot of money on these 3x ETFs, uh, and they're buy and hold, it's, it's, it's awesome. Just you just hold it. You don't even need to actively trade it. So let's take a look at the first chart here. Uh, this one is going to be the QQQ versus TQQQ. So TQQ is triple QQQ. QQQ is Nasdaq. All right. So Nasdaq versus three X Nasdaq. Now the starting capital for the this red line right here versus the blue line. The blue line is the triple Q. A red line is just the normal QQQ. Um, so with a balance of starting balance, both of $10,000, and this is from the past 10 years. So since 2011, uh, which one would have done the best if you just put $10,000 in it and leave it alone? Well, the answer is the triple Q and how much is it actually up by? Wow. Let's do some math here. What is this? Okay. <laughs> I didn't even know the calculator can do that. Nice. Okay. Uh, so the final balance, and this is with compounded annual growth rate, you can see right here. Um, but yes, with compounded compounded uh, growth, uh, because we just buy and hold, we don't touch it. So the Q, uh, QQQ went from 10000 to $64,925, and the triple Q went from $10,000 to $593,700. $97. So that is a lot more. So let's let's do that. About 593,000 divided by six, about 65,000 for the QQQ. So that's more than nine times. It's more than nine times, but actually shouldn't it have only been three. But yeah, of course, it's, you're going to compound all this money. So it's going to be more. Also, yeah, there's drags. There's periods where <coughs> you are dragging. Look at these dips. The dips in the chart for the triple Q are more than the normal uh uh, well, sorry, the 3x triple Q, the TQQQ are more than the normal QQQ. Yes, for sure. It's 3x. You go 3x down. Uh, and of course, you need more to come back up. So yes, there is some sort of drag. As you can see, the compounded annual, annual growth of the triple Q is 20%. 
and the average of the uh, TQQQ is almost 50%. So for sure, there is some drag. And this is over 10 years, so this is not a short amount of time. We can test this, back test it. Um, but anyways, it's pretty much like that. The max drawdown for the QQQ was 17%, and the max drawdown for the triple Q was almost 50%, 49%. So if you can stomach uh, volatility, if you can stomach the drawdowns, yes, they will draw down. Uh, there will be times where they go down. Uh, you just have to be able to stomach it and get past it uh, because overall these are index index funds. All right. Next, let's back test a different way. Let's do the same. QQQ, TQQQ, um, starting capital, $25,000, back tested from January 2018, so three and a half years. So in the past three and a half years, how did it do? And again, the blue line is T TQQQ. So we saw in the past four years, uh, it was relatively flat, but then up until the COVID dip, the triple Q was, the TQQQ was ahead, and the COVID dip, yes, that was a big drawdown. That was that was the uh, 49% that you can see for the max drawdown. Um, so, yeah, but after that, and hopefully you're buying the dip. Hopefully you are. I mean, add in the $500 a month, which is about $6,000 per year, and that's, that's your standard IRA. <coughs> but if you're doing this, and you can stomach it. You're going to buy and hold it anyways. And then after the market's already uh, recover and come back up, yeah, sure. It's going to be really interesting. It's the CAGR of the QQQ is 25% and the TQQQ is 52%. Um, so again, the triple Q, the TQQQ, oh my God, the T, I want to think triple, but it's not triple. The triple Q is the normal QQQ. The uh, 3X QQQ, I should say, wins again. And the $25,000... In the normal QQQ, finished after four years at $52,000, which is not chump change. That is actually very good. And the TQQQ, though, finished up at $98,000, almost $100,000. So if we do the math on that, well, we don't need to do the math. That math is easy. That's 400% in three and a half years. So that's more than 100% per year. And this is buy and hold. This is not some complicated trading strategy with a lot of algorithms and maybe some bots or something like that or super risky options. I mean, there's you can obviously make a sh very strong case that options trading, even though it's not leveraged ETFs, the options tradings are insanely more risky than these leveraged ETFs because after all, this is the TQQQ, it's a NASDAQ 100. It is diversified across the NASDAQ. Also, there's S&P 500. Also, there's Dow. You can do all three. Split up your portfolio. That's a super good diversified, a super well diversified portfolio. SPXL, UDOW, TQQU. <coughs> Throw in some other ones if you want. But at least this has the diversification. Uh, but anyways, point is, the TQQQ over the four years, long term, uh, with a starting balance of 25000 has grown uh, compounded. Uh, by more than 400%, and that's only in less than three and a half, three and a half years, so a little more than three years. And that's buying holding, buying and holding. And anyways, the next chart that I want to look at, we're, uh, we back tested the SOXL TQQQ QLD, which is the 2X QQQ, and the just the SPY. So we got that SPY, which is S&P 500, compared to the 2X NASDAQ, compared to the 3X NASDAQ, and compared to the SOXL, which was one of my favorites as of late, um, is the 3X Concentrated Semiconductor ETF, 3X. All right, so let's see who is the winner, and it turned out, the and this is over 10 years, guys, <coughs> with a starting balance of $25,000 in every month, adding $500 to your uh, account, just buying market buying $500 every month. So... What ended up happening was SOXL and TQQQ, both the three X's, they did very, 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 very similar things. Uh, overall, the blue line is the SOXL. As you can see, the SOXL was a lot more volatile and had a very, very bad 2011 and 2012 uh, for the semiconductors. But overall, it has caught back up and it actually finished up with a uh, CAGR compounded annual growth rate of almost 60%, while followed by the TQQQ 57.36%, uh, which is the red line. So overall, if I'm comparing the blue and the red lines, I mean, the blue line looks a little bit more crazy and volatile compared to the red line, which is the TQQQ. So if you're thinking just buy and hold something, forget about it. You don't want it so much volatility. I mean, let's, yeah. The winner would be the TQQQ, and that would be what I would prefer. 
Uh, why? Because the TQQ is NASDAQ 100 3X. That's going to be more diversified, going to have more different companies diversification than just a SOXL, which is too concentrated in semiconductors. If semiconductors are crap one year, then that's going to suck, as you can see in 2011 and 2012. If the semiconductors are amazing, which is pretty much this year because there's an insane chip shortage, so the SOXL is going to be really good, and that's why it's winning out. Um, yeah. And then the QLD is also a nice. It did 44 almost 45% uh, CAGR. That's not bad. I mean, the, even the 2X one, it's it's interesting to put some money in it. But compared to the $25,000 investment with a 500 uh, contribution every month, the $25,000 for the 2X QQQ, the QLD, is a $1.1 million from 25000 over 10 years. And then the uh, 3X QQQ is $2.6 million. So, I mean, that's nothing to laugh about. The only thing I would say is the SOXL is volatile. If you can stomach a pull, a drawdown of, what was the drawdown? Uh, the worst year for Soxel was 48%, which was probably in 2011. And then it says the max drawdown right here was a negative 65%. Yes. And the QQQ was negative 49%, which that was COVID, guys. Yes. The COVID really hurt those. Um, but keep in mind... Last month, Soxel literally, from the March dip, Soxel literally fell by 40%, 39 something percent last month. It was a wonderful buying opportunity, and since it's recovered almost all the way. Soxel, the 3X semiconductor, it fell 40% last month. It's going to pull back 30%, 40%. Look at the charts. It will pull back that much, but then it'll run up 150%. It's going to dip by 30, 40%, run up 150%. In 2011, it dipped by 60, what was it? The worst year, Max Strong now, 65% it dipped in 2011. That's crazy. But then again, um, if, you, if you're if you consistently buying the dip, it could be interesting. Um, but eventually, it, it, it did recover. So I wouldn't, if I had to compare just for a long time, holding and buying, buying and holding, uh, Hodling, I would definitely say TQQQ is better. Although the last couple of years, because of the semiconductor uh, chip shortage, uh, the, the the SOXL has done very well, very well indeed. But anyways, moving on to the last chart, which is the same four, uh, just compared to the th uh, past uh, three and a half years since the beginning of 2018, twenty five thousand dollars, five hundred dollars a month. Um, Soxel went from 25,000 to 174, which was the clear winner here. It's 50, uh, 80, almost 82% CAGR, and uh, T Triple Q was 74% CAGR. QLD is not that bad. It's actually pretty good uh, because of the drawdown. Uh, sorry, because of the drag. So, yeah. Pretty much, those are my thoughts. Uh, again, you can see here for the COVID dip, uh, yeah, I mean, for sure that's going to be volatile. But again, like I said, you're going to have to stomach those dips. I mean, if you can't do it, if you're a boomer, if you're if you're retirement age, yeah, you don't want to you don't want to see that. You don't want to see that with your money uh once you're retired and you've got some safe dividend stocks, which there's nothing wrong with that. Nothing wrong with being a boomer and investing in safe dividend stocks, but f I think for me myself, uh I the, I can see myself the closer I'm getting to retirement, yeah, for sure, the less risk I'm going to take. Uh but I don't really feel like this is all that risky because Yes, if you're in a bear market, if you're, uh, if there's a big recession or a crash looming in on the horizon, no, you don't want to be in the three X's. Obviously, that's not a good time to be in them. Uh, but also, there's one famous person that said time in the market is better than timing the market, which is for sure is true. Uh, but again, there, you know, there's some times that we should be taking the profits and not be in these. Although I think overall, long term. It is still okay to buy and hold. It might not be the best thing. I'm not giving financial advice. I'm just uh, showing you the back test and giving my thoughts. Uh, for sure, there's obviously a right time to be in and a right time to be out. But then again, there's timing the market better than timing the market. Uh, timing time in the market is better. So, you know, it's of course, at the end of the day, it's up to you and your risk tolerance. Uh, I wouldn't say put all your apples in one basket, but I do, I do think, and, and not all of my portfolio is 3X ETFs. I'm not saying go all in here, but... Uh, I do think that there is a place for 3X in any portfolio for a buy and hold long term. Uh, I mean, compared to the SPY, I mean, if you believe in the U.S. stock market, the U.S. economy overall, you believe in it, you think stocks are going up, you think asset prices are going up, uh, you believe that there's going to be growth in the U.S. economy, 
So why would you buy the SPY instead of the SPXL? Why would you buy the S&P 500 index instead of a 3X S&P? I mean, it doesn't really make sense if you think that there is, there's not really any significant drag. I mean, there is obviously drag. Drag is a real thing. But I don't necessarily think it's anything to be scared of, as we can see by the back test over the past 10 years. Um, you know, I don't think that there's not necessarily anything to be afraid of. And I think that there is a place in everyone's portfolio. But of course, it doesn't really make sense to me why people are so against these and so biased against them. Uh, I mean, they perform well and actually it's more than 3x. Like in the last year I've tested, my 3x's are doing 4 5x. And the Soxel I think is even up to 6x. Um, but since about 12 months and my Soxel is about, my Soxel position is about 255% up. And that's with dollar cost averaging. I didn't buy all of my shares of Soxel at one time. And if I had, if I would have, I'd be up a lot more. Probably be up 600%. Eh, but I'm up 255% because I dollar cost averaged into it. But still, I will take it. It's good. I think that there is a time and a place. And there's nothing wrong with holding these. Uh, of course, again, there is a risk if you think that there's about to be a big crash. You will get crushed. If, if the Dow falls 30% like it did in 2008, your 3X should be down 90%. Nobody wants to see their stuff down 90%, I can tell you that. That, that would not be a good feeling. Um, but keep in mind, even in uh, this past March, Soxel was down 40%. And I was holding a lot of Soxel. And it's okay. Buy more, it's already recovered. Um, so I, I still am not against this. Uh, I have a background in Bitcoin, which is super volatile. I've seen it crash by hundreds of percent, so I'm not so... Um, against the, I'm not I'm not scared of the volatility I can stomach 30 40 percent drop uh, because I don't need the cash I can hold long term but anyways that is that is my thought that those are my thoughts on the three x's I like them I think that they're an okay investment they might not be the best investment I mean things are getting more than 100 percent per year <laughs> I mean arc g arc k last in 2020 did even better than these three x's and those aren't leveraged so I mean you know it's it doesn't matter. But I do think that overall it's good. It has diversification across the U.S. stock market, uh, NASDAQ, S&P, uh, Dow Jones. You can get 3X on those. If you think overall the markets are going up, why would you just buy a Dow Jones index? Why would you just buy an S&P index? Why would you just buy a NASDAQ? Why wouldn't you get a 3X one? doesn't make sense not to, in my opinion. Uh, but anyways... I think they're diversified, and I think it's a little bit more spicy than just the boring old spy or QQQ. Anyways, guys, let me know what you think in the comments. Follow me on Twitter for the live trading. I'm not going to give any picks today. I'm really into this 3X talk. We were talking about it in the Discord. Join the link in the description. There is the Discord link. Join it. If the link is not working, uh, DM or PM me, and I will give you a new link. Sometimes they expire. They have very short lifespans. But uh, we were talking about it in the Discord, so I wanted to make this video on it since I was thinking about it. Um, but uh, nevertheless, guys, I will see you on the other side. Peace.